Thanks to Skillshare for supporting this episode of SciShow Psych. The first thousand people to click on the link in the description can get a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. We humans have our noses to thank for our powerful sense of smell. Most of us, at least, can use our noses to tell that dinner is ready, or that there's a gas leak. It can save our lives. But our noses also do a lot of work that they don't get as much credit for. They pick up on chemical cues that affect us on a subconscious level, and yet those cues may play an important role in our social interactions and our personal well-being, even though we have no idea it's happening. Now, in the past, smell hasn't gotten much press compared to our other senses. But a lot of recent research suggests that our sense of smell is far more important than we first realized. One big clue is that we humans are pretty smelly compared to our closest ape relatives. And not for nothing, our B.O. reflects a combination of factors like our genetics, our diet, and our emotional state. This can all be important information, and like it or not, our sweat can carry that information to other members of our species, with no effort on our part. When you smell someone's B.O., your brain processes the chemical information it contains, and one thing it can do is influence your emotions. Among social species like humans, emotional contagion, or the ability to transmit emotions from one individual to another through the senses, is common and pretty useful. For instance, if one individual sees some danger like a predator and starts giving off fear signals, others may pick up on those signals and have a better chance of protecting themselves. Plenty of studies have shown that humans and other social species transmit emotions through visual cues, like facial expressions and body language. And studies have also shown that certain animals transmit emotions like fear through invisible cues in their scent, known as chemosignals. So some scientists wondered how much these chemosignals might play a role in emotional contagion among humans. In a 2012 study, one team of researchers designed an experiment to find out. In it, one set of participants watched videos that would provoke either fear or disgust while wearing sweat pads in their armpits. After Afterward, a second set of participants were asked to smell those sweat pads, and the experimenters recorded their emotional state. Conveniently, the emotions of fear and disgust tend to provoke opposite physical responses. When you're scared, your body will typically try to take in more sensory information, so your face will open up as you breathe more deeply and scan the environment with your eyes. On the other hand, when you are disgusted, you'll generally reject sensory information. Like, you'll walk past a row of porta potties and you'll scrunch up your face and take really shallow breaths and look around less. Now, these reactions aren't always super visible to the eye, but by monitoring their eyes and facial movements, the researchers could tell which which facial muscles were activated in each person, and which emotional state their expressions reflected. And the authors found that participants who sniffed disgust sweat tended to display disgust, which, you know, seems like a normal reaction when you're sniffing sweat pads, but also those who sniffed fear sweat would also display fear. And that's even though they had no visual or other cues to suggest those responses. What's more, they weren't even consciously aware of the effect the smell was having on them. This suggests that the subconscious information in another person's sweat can play an important role in emotional contagion. And sharing emotions isn't only useful for protecting against threats in the environment. Literally feeling what other people feel is the basis of empathy. Various studies have linked empathy with what's called prosocial behavior, or behavior that helps other people. Basically, if we have the capacity to feel what others feel, we are more likely to look after their well-being. So in a less direct way, empathy is also a a survival skill for our species. In the past, research has shown how visual cues can activate our empathy and make us more likely to help people out. But more recent research has highlighted the fact that visual cues don't act alone. For instance, a 2018 study looked at the role of chemo signals in making us feel empathy. So get this. The researchers used cotton pads to collect armpit sweat from a group of 16 participants as they gave fake presentations that were meant to intentionally stress them out. Then the researchers had a separate group smell those cotton pads while looking at pictures of people in different situations. In some pictures, the people were in pain, while in others, they were doing something neutral. And as the participants looked at the pictures, the researchers used an EEG to measure the levels of specific brainwaves that correspond with empathy. And they found that when the subjects 
subjects looked at pictures of people in pain. They had the most empathetic response while they were smelling sweat that contained stress signals. In fact, even when the subjects looked at neutral images, they tended to have an empathetic response if they smelled the sweat with stress signals. They concluded that emotional contagion through smell has a strong influence on our empathy and can sometimes even override what we see. Scientists still don't know exactly what chemicals act as chemo signals, so there's still plenty of research to be done. But what studies so far have shown is that these signals that we take in subconsciously are a really important part of our lives. And we have BO to thank for the role that it plays in our well-being and the well-being of our society. Something good for your well-being that doesn't smell bad is picking up new skills, and Skillshare can help with that. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. For example, if you're watching this video and you think you'd like to make YouTube videos yourself, you might like the course YouTube Success — Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, taught by Marquez Brownlee. Skillshare is always ad-free, so you can focus on learning, and right now, the first people to click on the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of premium membership. So thanks.